Hello there, Mr. Sutton here with the AB Calculus 4.6 Classwork Extra Practice Solutions on Graphical Analysis. For this problem, we're given the graph of f prime. We want to know where the original function f is increasing. So f is going to be increasing wherever f prime is positive. Looking at our graph here, f prime is positive between negative 2 and 3, or at least it's non-negative on this interval. Um, so depending on who you are, you might say, oh, it's from negative 2 to 1 and then from 1 to 3. Um, but I'm just going to say from negative 2 to 3 because we can include places where it's defined on intervals of positivity here. So we'll say negative 2 to 3 greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, we can say that f is increasing on the interval from negative 2 to 3. And indeed, there is an answer choice there for negative 2 to 3. You notice there's no answer choice for negative 2 to 1 union uh, 1 to 3. It's just that one. So choice B. On this graph, we're given a f double prime of some function. We want to know where the original function has a point of inflection. So that's going to happen wherever f double prime is changing sign. The only place that happens, f double prime changes sign at 0 and a, and that's it. Um, so therefore, f has points of inflection at a and 0. We bounce on B, but that's not good enough. Um, so we're going to choose then answer choice A. For this problem, we're given the graph of F, and we want to put in order F prime of negative 1, F prime of 1, and F prime of 0. So these are all talking about the slope of this graph here. We're not going to be able to get exact values necessarily, but we can at least figure out how they are relative to each other based on things like positive, negative, or 0. So let's take a look at each of them individually f prime of negative 1, that's right here. That's a horizontal tangent line, so that's an f prime of 0 right there. And f prime of positive 1, well actually let's do f prime of 0 next. Uh, at 0, we appear to have a positive slope. So although we don't know how positive it is because there's no y scale, we can say that f prime of 0 is greater than 0. And then finally, f prime of 1, that's going to be less than 0 because we're, we're decreasing on the original function. So we're just putting these in order. The first one is going to be the one that's less than 0, negative. So that would be f prime of 1. That's going to be less than the one that's 0, so f prime of negative 1. And that has to be less than whichever one was positive, so less than f prime of 0. Let's just carefully pick this out of the answer choices. So let's see, we're starting with f prime of 1. That's going to be d or e. And then we want negative 1 next, so that's going to be choice d. For this problem, we're given the graphs of the derivatives of f, g, and h here. And we want to know which of the original functions, f, g, or h, has a relative max somewhere on the interval from a to b. If we're looking for a relative max on the original function, we want to know where the derivative changes its own sign from positive to negative. Looking at my three graphs, I see that f prime changes positive to negative right here a little bit before we get to b. G prime changes negative to positive, but it doesn't change positive to negative anywhere. H prime doesn't even touch the x-axis. So out of these three, only F prime changes positive to negative somewhere on A to B. Therefore, only F prime, only F rather, has a relative max somewhere on the interval from A to B. Uh, so that would be choice A, F only. For this problem, we're told that the derivative of a function F is increasing until we get to 0 and decreasing after, we want to know which could be the graph of the original function, f. So the key on this one is that they're telling us about whether or not the derivative of a function is increasing or decreasing. That's another way of telling us basically if we're concave up or down. Since f prime is increasing on x less than 0, that means that uh, f double prime is positive and therefore f is concave up until we get to 0. Since f prime is decreasing after we get to 0, that means that f is going to be concave down after 0. So let's look at a graph that matches that. Looks like uh, choice A is concave up everywhere, no change in concavity. B is concave down everywhere, so A and B are eliminated right off the bat. Um, but now these other ones have different concavities. So we want to go concave up followed by concave down. Choice C is concave down to start with. Choice D also concave down, just a different uh, end of the concave down. Choice E, we are concave up, then we're concave down. 
So choice E it is. On this problem, we're given the graph of f prime, derivative of f, and they're telling us the line tangent to f prime at x equals 0 is vertical, so we have a vertical tangent line. And they're also telling us f prime is not differentiable at x equals 2, so that must be a, a cusp or a corner, probably a cusp. Based off of all this, we want to know which answer here has to be true, so we go through and use process of elimination. Uh, choice A, f prime does not exist at x equals 2. Well, f prime does exist at x equals 2. Here's the graph of f prime. Here's x equals 2. We have a solid line right there. Um, so therefore, uh, this is a false statement. So we can say no to that one. Next one, f is decreasing on the interval from 2 to 4. On the interval from 2 to 4, it looks like f prime is positive. If f prime is positive, that means f would actually be increasing on the interval. So this is a, a, a no because f should be increasing there, not decreasing. Next, graph of f has a point of inflection at x equals 2. Now just looking at this at what f prime is doing, at x equals 2, f prime is changing from increasing to decreasing. So that actually tells us that yes, we will have a point of inflection because f double prime is changing positive to negative. So we should actually pick this answer choice at the end of the day, but let's take a look at d and e just to be sure. A D graph has a point of inflection at 0. Well, at 0, we don't have any change in the direction. We're not reversing direction for F prime. We're increasing until we get to 0, and then we're still increasing after. Um, so that's a no. And then last one, F has a local max at X equals 0. Well, here we're changing F prime from negative to positive, which would be a local min. So that would be a no as well. Uh, so then we go back to C and pick that one. There we go. On this problem, this free response, we're given the graph of F prime between negative and positive 7. And we're told we have horizontal tangent lines at negative 3, 2, and uh, let's see here, also 5, just in case you were confused about any of those, and a vertical tangent line at X equals 3. These will all actually be important, but for the first problem here, the first part, they want to know where f attains a relative minimum. Well, you've got f prime. If you were looking for relative mins on f, you're basically asking where does f prime change from negative to positive? And f prime changes negative to positive in only one spot at x equals negative 1. Therefore, f has a relative min at x equals negative 1. For this next part, we just want to know where uh, f attains a relative max. So that's going to happen where f prime changes positive to negative. The only place that happens, f prime changes positive to negative at x equals negative 5. Therefore, f has a relative max at x equals negative 5. On this problem, we want to find everywhere between negative and positive 7 where f double prime is less than 0. So if I want to know where the derivative of f prime is less than 0, I just need to know where f prime is decreasing. Well, that happens on the interval from negative 7 to negative 3, and also on the interval from 2 to 5, except we have that vertical tangent that they were talking about at x equals 3. Uh, so at that spot, we can't really say that f prime is decreasing because the slope isn't really negative. It's an undefined, perfectly vertical slope for just that one spot. Um, so f double prime, at the end of the day, does not exist at x equals 3. So when we write out our final answer here, we have to say f double prime is less than 0 on the interval from negative 7 to negative 3, so the same interval here, nothing wrong there, and then the interval from 2 to 3, union interval from 3 to 5, and now we're good.